Um, All right, that's okay. We can go right to my uh, next one. Exactly, Pedro. So um, there's no need for introduction because uh, Pedro will just continue. Um, and his next session is about current SU2, uh, about the current SU2 code structure and development uh, philosophy. So, all right. Thank please. you again. Um, so this will be a, a, a double down into uh, coding aspects and um, general development practice as we as we try to do it now um, in SC2. So next. Uh, this will be a high level description of uh, some of the most important changes that have happened to SU2 in the past uh, uh, year, year and a half again. It will be a, a description of important code patterns and, and guidelines uh, and also why we need them with some examples. Um, and, and I will also talk a bit of uh, how to be a, a good GitHub neighbor and of some initiatives that uh, that are coming uh, towards that end. This will not be an introduction to how to um, develop code for um, to, for SE2 because that's been covered. So there there are some resources here as footnotes if you want to get started with uh, uh, with GitHub and submitting codes. You know going through the review process and, and so on. It will also not be a step-by-step -step, uh, how to implement certain features in SU2 because there's no time for that. Uh, but um, again, there will be uh, resources uh, suggested in this talk so you can uh, um, get more help on these topics. Next. Uh, Pedro, just one second, please. Um, I just wanted to mention if people have all your problems, um, there's a link on the SU2 Foundation website uh, to the YouTube stream and uh, audio is working there in any case. Thank you. Uh, so uh, motivation. Um, we have come a long way uh, in terms of uh, making improvements in, uh, in all these areas of development. So this is a uh, a happy talk by Pedro, if you believe it. Uh, however, we we continue to grow inorganically. At least the the developer the developers com community grows inorganically, and we don't want and we don't need a boss. And so we need a mutual beneficial approach to, to kind of uh, develop and improve SU2. Uh, and also a very important aspect of very uh, of most good codes that we need to keep in mind is that they have been rewritten at some point in their lifetime because no one predicts uh, the future. And so assume that SC2 uh, will be rewritten, uh, not just the parts you write, uh, and make the job of that person easier because in most cases it will be you, and rewrite while you can uh, because it will never get easier as more things are added. So in summary, we need features, not really lines of code. And this again goes back to the, to, to the initial talk. And we need to continue to add documentation and tutorials. And we have made you know, excellent progress in, in, in all those things. Next. So how are we achieving this uh, reduction in lines of code while improving the functionality and the capabilities of the code? So again, not by predicting the future, but learning from, from the past as quickly as we can. So we try not to duplicate every, anything. And especially, we have moved away from kind of a, a copy, paste, and then modify a developing philosophy to a cut and paste and specialize instead. Um, and also by using uh, good abstractions that promote reuse in other areas. So for example, if you want something um, if, you have, if you have some math abstraction, that's much better than a, a domain-specific thing, for example, a dot product versus computing a normal velocity. It's the same operation, but uh, it, it makes for reuse instead of uh, duplicating the, the implementation of that. And also by trying to write uh, generic code, if you want to look at what, what, what is meant by generic code, there's a brilliant reference here. Uh, but for example, we're talking about algorithms that do not depend on specific uh, data structures. So uh, abstractions, i.e. some 
some matrix is much better than having uh, than to manually handle the memory layout or to have arrays of arrays or something like that. And there will be more examples of that later. Next. Uh, in in uh, in parallel with that, there's also an effort to uh, follow uh, good programming practices. So using you know the the language features that uh, that allow us to write safer code using more of the standard te template library um, because that contains a lot of tested algorithms and containers that have standardized behavior. For example, in terms of uh, computational complexity. And also uh, writing a lot more uh, and smaller functions and classes with very explicit interfaces that have no hidden state, allow you to en encapsulate the details of the implementation. And we'll talk about the importance of that later. And are especially much easier to unit test. Uh, and so, in summary, we want good code because this gives you gives, this gives us good research, which is what we want. Uh, from SU2. Next. So, what are some of these changes that have been taking place? We have a lot of we have a lot more free and static functions. So not everything needs to be a class, and you will see you will see in the code that we have, uh, for example, toolboxes for lots of for lots of things now, and these are basically just collections of very small functions or very or very small uh, classes that are meant to be reused throughout the code. Uh, we have specialized containers for uh, different applications. Um, and we have uh, free functions, for example, to compute gradients or, or limiters. That's uh, because they operate on some um, kind of mathematical abstraction. They don't need to be um, duplicated for, for, for physics-specific things like conservative variables or primitive variables or um grid velocities and, and and so on so this uh this has been one of the major changes is the the uh, uh widespread use of uh, templates in su2 to allow this kind of uh more abstract uh, reuse of uh code next uh you will also see uh, a lot more intermediate classes so for example there is now a, um, an intermediate class to all uh, finite volume uh, flow solvers. Uh, and basically, this is just a tool to allow reusing code. And, and these intermediate classes, what they tend to provide is um, a full implementation of common methods. For example, an implicit Euler iteration that, that doesn't really change. Also, allocation boilerplate for the different structures of the solver, which is shared pretty much by all of them. Uh, but of course, these are full implementations for a particular uh, variable type of the solver. So uh, Euler or uh, incompressible Euler and so on. And then this uh, classes also will also contain uh, template implementations of algorithms, for example, computing dissipation sensors, uh, which the difference between different solvers is just a change of the variable but the method itself of computing the sensor is, is the same. So going over uh, neighbors and, and so on. Um, and these templates uh, allow specialization of small details without virtual overhead. So um, this, was, this was always the, the idea, this kind of reuse, um, uh, because C-Solver used to contain this kind of uh, functions. But as the, code, as the code grows, it does not make sense to add more things to, to C solver because you know, C solver is now also based for uh, other solvers that don't need any of, any of these things. And so we need to add more levels to this hierarchy of classes. And because using polymorphism for these small details is not efficient, we need to rely on more C++ features and this case uh, templates. Next. So a concrete example uh, of, of this kind of reuse. Uh, so for example, this um, this uh, this uh, flow solver base will impl will provide a template implementation of the uh, center center dissipation sensor, uh, where it will take as the template parameter the variable 
that, the, that it uses for the sensor. And then when you get to the derived solver, for example, C Euler solver, for which the um, sensing variable is pressure, you just you know, write a very small uh, implementation of, uh, of what this uh, um, sensor variable function needs to provide, which is that just to return the pressure. And then you pass it to this implementation and this will instantiate this, um, this generic implementation and it will be as efficient as if you had written it, uh, you know, um, the, 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 the compiler will do the copying uh, for you, basically. You, you will see a similar pattern, for example, for limiters, and there the template parameter is the, is the limiter function. But again, the logic is all the same, regardless of the uh, type of limiter. Next. Uh, you will see this uh, kind of pattern of having more intermediate classes elsewhere. So for example, classes that track the solvers closely, like C output and C variable have, uh, have had recent, have had similar changes. You see here the, the diagram for the output structure. And, uh, this is generated with Doxygen. If you never, if you've never looked into that, it's fairly easy to build the Doxygen, uh, documentation for SU2. And it's a very good way to explore uh, to, you know, to find out what are the main families of classes and how they are related and, and also to um, jump between the code of, uh, of those classes. So have a look into that if you're new to SU2 or even if you're not, uh, you, might, uh, you might find something interesting there. Next. We still need uh, more changes, however. So you, you've seen from other talks that there's this trend to expose more functionality through Python. And really the motivation here is that it's not feasible to hard code every possible um, optimization workflow, design variable, and so on that people might want, uh, and then try to maintain all those combinations. So we kind of need to allow users to script their workflows. And this is something that uh, you can already do. Um, to some extent, with 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 uh, packages that are available in the uh, SU2 repository, uh, the challenge here, of course, is how to expose all SU2 functions without hard coding uh, all the possible combinations into uh, a wrapper. So, one possible solution we might want to look at is how is allowing objects to be queried. So you'll you would ask the solver, give me your available design variables, and then this would allow the uh, client code to uh, choose a particular variable uh, and to then use it. So this is in contrast with having uh, different methods to get and set uh, all different variables for, uh, from angle of attack to side slip to uh, pressure and so on, which is you know a bit what we what we have um, right now and should get rid of. Next. Another area uh, where we have a lot of this uh, boilerplate is uh, dconfig, uh, where we tend to have a lot of small ma small methods just to get you know uh, scalar values. And so, if you're developing a new feature, you could, for example, consider um, having a specialized type to to kind of con condense all the uh, parameters of your feature and then return that as a as a single method. Uh, which make things makes things a little bit a little bit more concise and easier to follow. Um, so you know types are a main tool of C++ and do not be afraid of creating new types and structs and classes and, and so on. Just next. Um, and so given this uh, changes in in the in SC2 where should a feature be implemented. Essentially, what we want is to minimize the impact to the interface, to the high-level interface of the code, while maximizing the applicability of a new feature. So a simplified call stack of SU2 is that you have drivers that use iteration classes that then call integration classes that use the solvers that use the numerics. And the higher you go in this stack, the more abstract the interface should be and the method should be larger. For example, you want to have driver run and you don't want driver get uh, drag or you, you don't want very sp physics specific things 
in this very high level classes. Uh, and so when, when implementing a new feature, you should go for um, uh, the right most abstract operation. So try to fit it into the uh, first pre-processing or post-processing, for example, that, um, uh, that makes sense. Uh, and if, you, if you're adding a new method, it does not have to be uh, virtual. So it, it does not have to be exposed to the, it doesn't have to impact the interface of the code. It, it should belong to one of these kind of uh, broader cat categories of uh, abstract operation. And then you should target the leftmost intermediate class. So you want, you want the, if you have something that can go into the uh, Euler solver, don't put it in the nature stock solver. Or if, you get, or if you have something that can be shared by all flow solvers, put it in the base for all the flow solvers and not for just the one that you're planning to use uh, right now. So try to make everyone benefit from uh, the fix or the optimization or the feature that you're implemented. And then finally, try to stick to kind of a convention where big object calls a medium object and then the medium object calls the small object. So not bypassing this, uh, this kind of um, uh, call stack and, and, and having the uh, iteration, for example, manipulating the, the numerics or, or something like that. Next. So the importance of this uh, high level abstractions and having concise interfaces is that you want to make sure that your operation always occurs at the right time regardless of how the of how the code is configured for example if the code if you're um, if someone uses your feature in the in an fsi context or unsteady or something like that you want to have it you want to categorize it yourself as the right to the right place pre-processing post-processing um, spatial integration time integration uh, so that other developers who will not know when to call uh, some you know arbitrary method uh, don't have to to figure this out basically when developing a new application um, and also they don't need to figure out how to call the this uh, new method you've introduced because there are usually some prerequisites to to calling uh, some methods you compute the the limiters after the gradients for example and not the other way around and uh, for another classical example is the order of operations to update um, the, the geometry in SE2. Uh, and of course, a lot of this is mitigated with explicit interfaces, uh, but it is still important to have this high level abstractions and very, uh, the smaller interface possible. Next. So how do you go about developing things in SE2? How to help other people, how to get help and how to propose and discuss ideas. Uh, as we've mentioned, there are developer meetings every Wednesday at uh, uh, 3 p.m. in the UK. You are uh, most welcome to propose other times if this is uh, completely absurd at, uh, in, your, um, in, in your country. There are GitHub issues and discussions and draft pull requests that we encourage you to open you know, as soon as possible and you know, all the time, just spam people. We have uh, Slack where you can find out who is working on uh, X, Y, Z, and, and try and find uh, kind of collaborators for something you want to do, or just general advice. And there's also um, CFD Online, where we have also been a lot more present lately, finding out how the code is being used uh, by users. And we have fixed a number of bugs just from the reports of users. Uh, and so in summary, don't uh, don't be a lone, a lone wolf. There's a lot of... Uh, smart people uh, in this community and try and interact with as many of them as possible. Next. Uh, so start from a good reference. That, that's the main thing. There, there's, you know, different places of SU2 have been, de were developed at uh, different times uh, where people, you know, learn different lessons. And so if you just look for something, uh, look for a good reference in SU2. So a good reference for the style and for the um, type of implementation that, uh, that uh, we're trying to move the code towards, essentially the state of the uh, art within SU2. Um, and if, especially if you're new to C++, invest some time in learning and getting some best practices. 
this will save you a, a, a ton of time debugging or waiting for for the code to run and the most you know important thing if you take nothing else is encapsulation so do not allow anything to become a pattern make it a function as soon as it would repeat so don't allow things to repeat and then possibly add a unit test for you know this new function or this new small class you've implemented and especially logic it is the most important thing that needs to be encapsulated in su2 because it, it is or it used to be a very common source of bugs so every time you have this kind of uh, going over different uh, different types of solvers or different types of boundaries you know look for the underlying concept that is um, that is behind this kind of uh, uh, logical association and encapsulate this somewhere else because you know someone someone will not be aware of the new boundary or the new uh, solver you introduced and vice versa and this will you know create bugs and and um, limit how the different features of su2 can interoperate next so going back going uh, talking now about being a, a good githubber um, we've gotten a lot better at contributing code there's there's a lot more people um, reviewing code, I feel. There's a lot more interaction via discussions. Um, and so this is just something that we need to stick to until it becomes you know, uh, an habit impossible to, to break. We want to advertise and discuss and design uh, the features we're writing before we start, we start writing, especially if it's something large that's gonna take you a lot of time. We want to open uh, work in progress or draft pull requests as soon as possible to let other people know what you're working on, where you're working on uh, in terms of, you know, which branch and possibly find people that are interested in the same thing. So it, it's, it's, I think I, for me, it's the saddest thing to hear that different people across the world were, uh, are developing the same thing. I mean, it's, uh, it's the internet. We should know what uh, everyone is up to. Um, Divide working packets to facilitate the integration and reviews. So don't don't allow things to get too large. It's it's really really hard to review uh, a thousand lines of changes. Not so much a thousand new contiguous lines, but a thousand lines of changes is very challenging to review. If something shows up as part of a larger pull request, uh, a fix, especially separate it immediately, put it in develop. Um, otherwise, you know some some someone else will run into the same problem and, and, and fix it. And then you have a conflict with that, uh, with, with that work. Add unit tests for your code, um, you know, at the start, um, you usually have some, um, you usually know that your code needs to meet certain criteria. So you can add unit tests at the start and then you develop against these tests. Uh, help with the pull request review process. So if you're not comfortable, uh, approving or anything because you know you're not you don't feel comfortable yet just comment uh let people know that you care about the code and your your opinion uh does matter so um yeah and uh you know some other things don't uh pretty format the code for no reason because this creates merge conflicts and uh you know uh, makes people mad uh, use or reuse Clang format on new files or uh, recently formatted files to keep everything tidy uh, and with a uniform style across the code. Um, and try to check what's going on with develop uh, once a week uh, or something. Even if you don't, you know, get full notifications from from GitHub, try to you know go once a week and see what's happening. Uh, usually we don't merge things uh, within we we wait more than a week so. If you check on, on this kind of periodicity, you will see what's going on. Next. Uh, so now managing branches. If you don't know, there are 80 people with access to, to the uh, repository that can freely create branches. And this has resulted in around 240 of them, um, which is difficult to, to manage when you're uh, looking for something. So make sure you delete a branch after you merge it because you, you know, it, it's, it's basically up to date with develop at that point, it's useless. 
um, open a draft pull request when you create a new branch and, and you plan to have this uh, in develop at some point, open a draft pull request to know what this branch is about, uh, mostly because pull requests can be searched and uh, branches cannot. So, uh, and then try to follow the same guide, guidelines you would follow for, for a pull request. So don't put large mesh files or solution files together with the code, even if it's a personal branch, because you know when other people do uh, git fetch or when they have to move the code around, they will be moving these files too. Um, and so because of uh, these stale branches we have, there will be a work group appointing by the appointed by the foundation um, uh, around autumn time to do some some cleaning so this will entail uh, deleting stale branches deleting things that have been merged or that don't have any changes with respect to master and also to contact folks to uh, update and uh, document their um, their branches for example by including a, a readme uh, but you know preferably bring it up to speed with develop and if it has something important open a pull request uh, so if you're ever bored go check what branches you you are currently responsible for on github um, check if some of them are stale or if you don't need them and let's try and keep it uh, as tidy as uh, as we want the code next so in summary we have made and we will continue to make uh, progress in improving the quality and the number of features of the code. We have uh, more regular communication channels through Slack and through the developer meetings. We have a lot more doc documentation. We have uh, more contributors and we have a lot more interaction on GitHub and also on CFDA online directly with uh, users of the code. Uh, we need to keep this, uh, we need this to continue growing to support new developers and new users. Uh, especially because most people have a limited time within SU2. So usually the duration of a PhD or something like that. So it, it is uh, crucial that you get involved early and help keep this uh, momentum and you know, spreading this kind of uh, uh, environment of cooperation that, uh, that we want to keep. And that's all, thank you. So if you have any uh, questions or suggestions, on how we can, you know, do or improve or keep doing uh, all these things, and we're happy to to hear them in today's um, uh, open-ended session about um, development priorities. I think. All right. Thank you very much for this great overview, Pedro. Um, I just wanted to say um, we're getting some messages that people uh, do not get audio, and they, if they cannot hear me. So I prepared a little sign here. So there's the YouTube live stream uh, that you can always um, listen to. So please go there um, if you have audio issues. Um, and we have one question for you, um, Pedro, Pedro um, from Juan. And he's asking, are there recommendations for new developers to understand the latest and greatest code structure and uh, development philosophy? Uh, well, uh, this talk, I guess, and others similar to it uh, in the past. Um, and I would say that uh, uh, Doxygen is a very powerful tool to, to explore the code and to kind of understand how things are organized. Um, and, and just asking questions on the developer meetings. I think that's the, I, I don't think, I don't think there will be a, an effort to, to, to document the um, entire code, but there will there will always be a community that that will you know kind of point you in the in the right direction if you're if you're kind of lost. Um, yeah. Yeah, I second that. I, I took part a couple of times in the developers meeting, and um, usually I got uh, very good hints. So where to debug or that's a really good advice. Daniel? Uh, yeah. I'd like to jump in and ask Pedro a question if we have just a second. Yeah, please go ahead, Tom. Yeah, so uh, Pedro, you mentioned 
finding good examples of the more, let's say, recent uh, style of developing things in SE2. And you had some code snippets here in your talk. Are those anywhere on the website yet, or could we take some of, uh, you know, some examples of, of, you know, quote, good examples and put them in the, either tutorials or in the docs somewhere if they're not? Uh, who's we? <laughs> Uh, uh, we, can, we, can. we can, we can, we can, we can of course do that. We we can of course do that. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the the reason I pointed out is it would save a lot of effort of a lot of people. I think if you know, in case they see some of the old style of doing things, it's not always so clear how things are evolving. If we have a couple good examples present and and say focus on this, not on this, and I mean it could just be links to this presentation, which I think are great. So. All right, uh, thank you both and